From the Introduction to the Devout Life by St. Francis de Sales, Bishop. When God the Creator made all things, He commanded the plants to bring forth fruit, each according to its own kind. He has likewise commanded Christians, who are the living plants of His Church, to bring forth the fruits of devotion, each one in accord with His character, His station, and His calling. I say that devotion must be practiced in different ways by the nobleman and by the working man, by the servant and by the prince, by the widow, by the unmarried girl, and by the married woman. But even this distinction is not sufficient, for the practice of devotion must be adapted to the strength, to the occupation, and to the duties of each one in particular. Tell me, please, my Philothea, whether it is proper for a bishop to want to lead a solitary life like a Carthusian, or for married people to be more concerned than a Capuchin about increasing their income, or for a working man to spend his whole day in church like a religious, or on the other hand for a religious to be constantly exposed like a bishop to all the events and circumstances that bear on the needs of our neighbor. Is not this sort of devotion ridiculous, unorganized, and intolerable? Yet this absurd error occurs very frequently, but in no way does true devotion, my Philothea, destroy anything at all. On the contrary, it perfects and fulfills all things. In fact, if it ever works against or is inimical to anyone's legitimate station and calling, then it is very definitely false devotion. The bee collects honey from the flowers in such a way as to do the least damage or destruction to them, and he leaves them whole, undamaged and fresh, just as he found them. True devotion does still better. Not only does it not injure any sort of calling or occupation, it even embellishes and enhances it. Moreover, just as every sort of gem cast in honey becomes brighter and more sparkling, each according to its color, so each person becomes more acceptable and fitting in his own vocation when he sets his vocation in the context of devotion. Through devotion, your family cares become more peaceful. Mutual love between husband and wife becomes more sincere. The service we owe to the prince becomes more faithful, and our work, no matter what it is, becomes more pleasant and agreeable. It is therefore an error and even a heresy to wish to exclude the exercise of devotion from military divisions, from the artisan shops, from the courts of princes, from family households. I acknowledge, my dear Philothea, that the type of devotion which is purely contemplative, monastic, and religious can certainly not be exercised in these sorts of stations and occupations. But besides this threefold type of devotion, there are many others fit for perfecting those who live in a secular state. Therefore, in whatever situations we happen to be, we can and we must aspire to the life of perfection.